Xiao is one of the few champions that people get constantly confused. Half of the players believe that he's Ionian, while the other thinks he's Demacian, but in reality he was always both. So to avoid any and all future confusions, Riot decided to finally have a look at Xin Zhao and bring him into the modern universe. And because his story is not the shortest, let's jump right into it. Let's start with his bio that will sum up who he is. When Xin Zhao was a boy, he served on an Ionian fishing boat called Visero. He obeyed his elders every request as they sailed around the coast of Rikon. Everything was peaceful until the day they unknowingly ventured too deep into foreign waters. A pair of Noxian ships chased them down and their commander claimed Visero and his crew as his rightful property. Most of them were old fishermen that would be of no value in the Noxian military. But all of them, including Xin Zhao, were taken back to Noxian territory regardless. Suddenly Xin Zhao found himself in a land he didn't understand. There were no beautiful forests or ever-present magic. Only massive stone walls that surrounded cities cramped full of people. It didn't take long and Xin Zhao started learning about his new home. The capital where he was now was called Noxus and their leader was Darkwill. Since he was separated from his fellow fishermen, naturally he entered the service of the man who captured him. But he didn't stay there for too long. The commander noticed Xin Zhao's skills with a spear and since Noxus celebrated strength, these skills had to be showcased. When he was offered to enter the arena as a Reckoner, which is the Noxian term for gladiators, he accepted since he really had nothing to lose. But to everyone's surprise, he was met with a massive success. The young boy took on a new name, Visero, in honor of the ship that gave him his childhood. And soon the name Visero filled the seats of every arena. And with this new name, Xin Zhao was even able to get his own sponsors. But his fortune did not last for too long. Even though the arena entertained many Noxian citizens, the empire faced difficult times. Hostile nations surrounded their territories, which evoked rebellion across the Noxian frontier. And it was rumored that Darkwill and his advisors were paying massive amounts of gold for mercenaries, prisoners and reckoners to enter the Noxian war hosts. So just like that, Xin Zhao and his fellow fighters were sold to the empire and they were shipped to the west, around the Argent Mountains, to a coastal fortress called Kalstedt. There they were thrown into a battle against the elite forces of King Jarvan III of Demacia, who led a campaign to suppress Noxian influence on Valoran. While many of his fellow fighters deserted the battle, Xin Zhao held his ground, slaying hundreds of Demacian warriors. He was finally stopped when the greatest protectors of Demacia, called the Dauntless Vanguard, surrounded him. And even then Xin Zhao stood tall, welcoming his execution. But that's not what Jarvan wanted. The King of Demacia took no pleasure in needless killing. Instead, Jarvan offered the defeated Noxians mercy, if they swore to leave Kalstedt in peace. Back in Noxus, there was no mercy, and Xin Zhao couldn't imagine what would happen if he returned. So he knelt before Jarvan III, and he pledged himself to the king's service. Over the following decade, Xin Zhao proved his loyalty many times, and he became a personal bodyguard, an advisor, a friend, and a master to the king's son, Jarvan IV. So if we have a look at this entire bio, not only is Xin Zhao Ionian and a Demacian, but for many years he was also Noxian. But while this is where the story technically ends, that is not all the lore we have. There is also the story What Once Sailed Free, which goes deeper into what happened after Xin Zhao was captured by the Demacians. So let's go back to Kalstedt. The story begins with Xin Zhao being tied to a post, while the Demacian military reclaimed the fortress of Kalstedt. Xin was ready to face the consequences. He was waiting for his execution. After all, he was a soldier worth no honor. Back in Noxus, they called him a soldier of misfortune. These were fighters who were sent to deal with tasks unworthy of veteran soldiers. To Noxus, he was nothing but a throwaway weapon. After a while, Xin was approached by a Demacian shield sergeant. The sergeant asked for his name, and he was surprised when he realized that Xin Zhao doesn't sound very Noxian. Xin didn't reply since he didn't think this was a conversation worth having before his execution. After that, the sword captain crown guard, who we know as Tiena, ordered the sergeant to follow her and Xin was left alone. The scene continues in the morning of the following day. The sergeant who talked to Xin the previous day was back together with four other guards. The sergeant introduced himself as Olber. He brought the prisoners their breakfast, which was a hot soup. Olber also forgot the prisoner's name, so he accidentally called Xin Zhao, Zen Zhou. Then he freed Xin Zhao from his post so he would be able to eat his breakfast. After that, a short conversation broke out among the rest of the guards. Here we learned that they were following the crown guard's orders. Apparently, the captain crown guard's father saved Jarvan II at Storm's Fang, which was the current king's father. 
Xin Zhao noticed how the Damasians admired their king, and how they came to Karlstedt to claim it in the name of justice, while the Noxians were sent here to die. As the conversation continued, Xin Zhao told the guards about his past. He told them that back in Noxus he was a reckoner, but the guards couldn't recall anyone called Zen Zhao fighting in any arena. It took them a while, but in the end they realized they were standing in front of Visero, and suddenly all of them looked at Xin with newfound awe. He was the reckoner. He was known as the one who never lost. But the important thing for us is that one of the guards recognized Zin as the reckoner who defeated a Minotaur. Which of course is a nod to Alistar who was also captured for the Noxian arenas. When the Damasians asked him why did he call himself Zen Jo instead of Visero, Zin answered that he wanted to live his final moment with his real name instead. After this he told them about Darkwell's plans, how the reckoners were sold to the military and how they were sent here. And suddenly Olber understood. Xin Zhao didn't have a choice, and Olber offered him a new beginning. The scene then cuts to the noon of the same day. Xin Zhao was sitting in the healer's tent in his new clothes. He saw his fellow Reckoners rising from their beds, after the Demacian healers were done with their wounds. Xin Zhao still couldn't understand what was happening. He was sent here to die, and yet he lived. Not by the will of Noxus, but by the will of Demacia. An old healer approached him. She asked Xin if he was fine. In reply, Xin thanked her. And she said that he shouldn't thank her, he should thank the king. At this point Xin Zhao's interest peaked. He couldn't understand how a single man could inspire so much. It was like a fantasy to him, so he wanted to see the king for himself. In the next scene the Damasians were packing their stuff. It was rumored that another battle against Noxus was imminent. But Xin Zhao couldn't be sure. He was being escorted to the biggest tent in the entire camp. Of course it was the king's tent. Olber explains Xin Zhao the plan. Olber and the guards would stay outside, Zin would go in, kneel, accept the provisions granted by the king, and then Olber would collect him. The moment a prisoner was in front of the king he was a free man, but Captain Crown Guard was still running the camp, and she wouldn't have enemy combatants running around on their own, so Olber still had to escort Zin back after that. With these instructions, Zin Zhao walked into the tent. When he got past the entrance, he immediately knelt and bowed his head. When he looked up, he saw a man much older than himself, sitting on a throne-like chair. He wore radiant gold-plated armor, embellished with ebony spikes, and a crown adorned with jewels. By his right hand was a great steel lance, with edges sharp like the teeth of a beast. To the king's left was Sword Captain Crownguard. To his right was a small boy, undoubtedly the king's son, Jarvan IV. King Jarvan then questions in Zhao. He asked him about the origin of his fighting name, Visero and Zin explained that it was a reminder of his home. This surprised the king. He studied Noxians for years, but he never heard about a place called Visero. Zin then replied that it was not really a place, but rather a memory, one that changed meaning in Noxus. Throughout this conversation, Zin Zhao was constantly surprised at how kind-hearted the king was. Even when he accidentally interrupted the king, which could be considered offense against the Masia itself, the king just laughed it off. The king then asked Zin to tell him his story, and so, Zin did. He told Jarvan about everything. How he was named Zin Zhao by his parents who may or may not even live now. How he was born in a place known as Rikon, a coastal village in the First Lands, which other people call Ionia. And how he was working on a fishing boat called Visero. Then he told the king about the Noxians, how they captured them and how they were taken to the capital. And in the capital he would become a reckoner, Visero. Zin then continued with his stories from the arena. He killed many foes, many whose real name he didn't even know. Soon people started chanting his name, Visero, as their gold filled his master's pockets. After that Noxus offered his masters much more gold than the arena ever could. And that's how he ended up in front of the king. The king thanked him for sharing his story. And after that one of the guards brought in a bag of gold that would cover Zin's travels for a week. It was a second chance given to him by the king. Zin hesitated for a moment. He thought this was a trick. He couldn't believe a stranger let him live when he could end him with a wave of his hand. Zin took the gold, but before he left, he had one request. He wished to join the king's guard. Of course Captain Crown Guard wouldn't allow it, but the king let Zin Zhao explain his reasoning. He explained that before now he only knew two truths. Victory meant survival and defeat meant death. Yet he was defeated and there was no death. He had never known mercy or honor. In the arena he was no one. But here he was worthy of the king himself. He would rather die fighting for a cause than to live regretting that he had never made that choice. 
The king recognized the truth in his words, and he admired his speech, almost better than the king's own advisors. But yet, the king didn't have a proof that Xin Zhao was capable of being a guard. But Xin Zhao did have a proof ready. Without a warning, he threw the bag of gold at Captain Crown Guard, hitting her in her face. He swept his leg and knocked the guard on his left on the ground. He snatched his spear and knocked down the guard to his right. His movement was fluid and swift. In one final twirl of the weapon, he jabbed it forward, stopping inches before the king's throat. Suddenly, armed soldiers rushed in. But Xin Zhao quickly knelt down, dropped the spear and offered his neck. Tension filled the room, but the king ordered everyone to halt. Captain Crown Guard exclaimed that Xin tried to kill him, but the king saw the truth. In reality, Xin showed him how he could be killed, even in front of his guards. Xin Zhao then apologized. He only wished to demonstrate his skills. And surely his skills did impress the king. He was determined to accept Xin into his service and let the other guards learn from him. While Captain Crown Guard still didn't agree with his choice, the king reminded everyone that Demacia itself was founded by people who seek refuge from the evils of the world and that the story of Xin reminded him of great Orlon himself. The scene then cuts to the night of the same day. The camp moved far north of Kalstedt. Xin couldn't sleep, so he decided to go for a short walk. But only a moment after he got up from his bed, he was dragged into a dark tent. When he finally regained his senses, he saw Captain Crown Guard leaning over him with two heavily armed soldiers behind her. She told Xin that he was no Demacian in her eyes. She pulled out her blade before she continued. Even though he won the king's favor, she would be watching him. But Xin interrupted her threat. He grabbed the blade with his hands and pulled it closer to his own throat. He told her that if anything happens to the king, she may kill him. Well, the story certainly was full of information. Now, the most interesting thing for me was that we actually learned what Jarvan looks like. Apparently, Jarvan III looks exactly like the Jarvan we have in the game. Only he is much, much older. So I wonder, if Riot decides to update Jarvan in-game, will they turn his old classic look into a Jarvan III skin and give us a new look based on the universe art of Jarvan IV? Or will Jarvan IV take his father's armor? If so, that means that Jarvan III has to die at some point. We're getting gangplank level of visual updates here. Of course, this story came out right after we released a video on visual updates. <laughs> Hey, did you know that we have social media and Twitch where we talk about other league facts and stories? And did you know that we have need mugs and shirts too? The links to all of that will be below. And as always, thank you, come again.